Hi, my name is Robert. Please read the comments in the about section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please like, share, and subscribe. I hope you found what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks for tuning in to today's video. I think it is a very brilliant idea for you to come and try to get some information about interacting with your insurance company and possible insurance claim. Parking area, ouch! Dang! Oops! Ouch! Whoops! Oh man! I'm not sure if I ever mentioned this, but man, I fear insurance companies more than I fear God. You know, whenever the government mandates that you got to deal with something or you got to have insurance or you got to do this or you got to pay that. Those companies that facilitate those services, that puts them in a good position. And sometimes they flat out are hard to deal with. You're the puppet and they're the puppet masters. So in this video, I want to briefly go over some things that you may want to know in dealing with your insurance companies uh, first of all never file a claim if you don't have to you know it's just it's pointless I mean you have insurance so that you can cover it in the event that you need it but you never want to need it you know most of the time it's dealing with accidents sometimes it's dealing with vandalism sometimes it's dealing with malice but, you know, if you don't have to, you don't want to be dealing and filing claims on your insurance company. So here's a couple of things that I do that you may benefit from in trying to keep a uh, claim-free insurance record. Because th th that will help you maintain low and decent rates. First of all, if you're driving a vehicle around, you always want to make sure that you, one, have insurance and two, have that proof with you. Relieves you from a lot of tension. So, you know, uh, I'm sure you're a smart person. You're here getting this information. You already got that covered. Now, secondly, know whether the state you're in is a no-fault state or a fault state. There are actually some states that their politicians have written laws that dictate that, hey, if there's a car accident, it's nobody's fault. It's a no-fault state. Everybody deals with their own vehicle damage. Kind of surprising because you could be sitting there at a traffic light minding your own business. Somebody can come around a corner, turn too sharp, hit your car, and it ain't nobody's fault. Uh, sorry, I think that was your fault. You hit me. Anyway, know whether your state is a no-fault state or a you know, possibly false state. Now, realize that very few people wake up in the morning and say to themselves, I think I'm gonna find me a Mercedes to hit today. People don't do that. Uh, unless they're scam artists and they know they could possibly scam your insurance company out of money, which doesn't happen often in a no-fault state, normally in fault blaming states but anyway most normal people don't wake up looking forward to having an accident so accidents happen next sometimes especially nowadays accidents happen and people cause them and they know it's their fault sometimes they feel remorseful and sorry that they caused this accident and you got involved in that case a lot of times they don't even want to file a claim they've probably done this several times their car is all beat up like some of the ones i shown in an earlier video they really don't care that their car is banged up at that point you need to make sure that your car is covered hopefully by their insurance so you don't have a claim so this is kind of how that works sad but true most automobile accidents are within a couple of miles of people's home that's when most people let their guard down. When they're in familiar areas, when they've done something a thousand times, they think this time's gonna be the same. That's when accidents happen. Example, 
I was parked over there against the fence. I decided, hey, I want to back out of my parking spot and go somewhere. I'm backing out and there's two SUVs on both sides of me. I really can't see where I'm going. I'm easing out of the parking spot. As I'm coming out of the parking spot, thinking the coast is clear, looking through my mirrors, boom, I feel a bump. Crap. I hit the brake, I pull forward a little bit, I stop the car, throw it in park, I get out of the car, and the young lady is got her hands up in the air, crouched down. First of all, when you see a car coming out of a blind parking spot, it might be a good idea to stop your car and let them out. They can't see you. They're trapped in between two SUVs. Anyway, the lady was fiddling around with her phone. She didn't see me coming out. I didn't see her before I hit her. Bam, hit her. Hit the side of her car, messed up her fender, messed up her headlight on the side, and I broke the water bottle that holds washer fluid because that stuff just gushed out on the ground. She apologizes to me before I get the chance to apologize to her. I said, wow, I'm sorry about that. I didn't see you. She said, well, you know, I wasn't paying attention, kind of confessed. So I, I pulled my car back in the spot. I get out. We both look at her car, look at my car. My car didn't have a dot on it. Hers is busted up. I said, hey, you know, uh, man, what do you want to do? She says, well, it doesn't look that bad. So I offered to give her my insurance company information. Well, I backed into you. I didn't see you coming. If you want, I could give you my insurance company information because I hit her and they can fix your car. She goes, no, I think I'll be okay. I said, well, if you like, I could try to help you with that. When you have liability, the minimum required car insurance, you never have to come out of your pocket for a deductible. Your insurance company will fix this car, no out-of-pocket expense. So don't offer to pay out-of-pocket to fix somebody's car. That's, that's, that's not good. Unless you know your insurance company is ready to drop you if you have another claim. Don't do that. So I told her, you know, if you want, I could take a look at it. Might be able to help you. But really, if you want your car fixed back the way it looked, I can give you my insurance company information. You can file a claim. She thinks about it for a second. She said, no, that's okay. I, I should have been paying better attention. Don't worry about it. So I say, if you change your mind... Let me know. I'm here all the time. She says, okay, great. We go our separate ways. Now, what's the likelihood that she will call the police two days later and claim that I hit her and refuse to give my information? It's not likely. You know, I offered it to her. I extended it to her. We're probably good. Now, I had an accident. I backed into somebody's car. Is there a claim on my insurance that mars my clean driving record? No. She didn't want the information. She didn't file a claim. I actually know people that when that happens, they call their insurance agent and put them on alert. You don't have to do that. Nobody was hurt. Minimal car damage. Everybody's car is still drivable. Don't turn yourself in for having an accident your insurance agent may put something in your file. So don't turn yourself in. Accept responsibility where it's due. Usually better if you don't say nothing. But hey, I'm a type of person, I offer my insurance information if I hit somebody. Now, let's say that accident would have been worse and it would have disabled her car. She'd have been forced to say, yeah, I need your insurance information. So she gets your insurance information. She contacts your insurance company to file a claim. Your insurance agent will then contact you, me, to verify that that incident actually happened. Now, if it's on private property and you kind of trust each other, you got the insurance information to surrender, you get yours. Maybe if you feel like she hits you, you get hers. If you think there's going to be some kind of dispute, 
that could get nasty, call the police, file a police report. However, if there is not a situation where nobody got hurt, you don't feel that that will come back later, you don't need the police there to file a police report, just exchange insurance information. Now, if my car would have been damaged and she would have called to file a claim, at that point, I would have made that one claim and I would have reported the damage on my vehicle as well. Now, let me tell you something. You can rub your car against one of these little support poles here, cause $1,200 worth of damage little crease on your car a rub mark like this one here so if your deductible is low 250 500 a thousand dollars and somebody's already filing a claim on your insurance go ahead and toss your car in there your deductible will be taken off any amount of money that they're going to give you that's if you have full coverage insurance now there's three type of insurances you have liability you have comprehension and you have collision now liability means you got the minimum insurance and if you hit somebody their car gets fixed but your car does not so you can't file a claim to fix your own car if you only have liability now if you have collision and most of the time that includes comprehension at that point if you hit somebody and they file a claim, you can also get your car fixed. And say, for instance, your deductible is 500. The damage on your car is 1,200. They'll give you a check for 700, and you pay the deductible amount as the difference to get your car fixed. So those are two scenarios. Another scenario is that you hit something and damage somebody's property you hit a light pole, damage something in the city. You hit a car that's not occupied. You hit a mailbox, something like that. If you hit something that it doesn't affect another person, understand that there may be surveillance cameras around. Stop, call the police, file a police report, and then turn that stuff in to your insurance company so that that property can be fixed by your insurance. If you drive away and the police come back to you later because somebody saw you or there was some surveillance camera or something like that, you might be charged with a hit and run and that will likely affect your insurance information. It may even affect your driver's license. So if you hit something, call the police, file a report, try to get it covered yourself. That's the only time I say tell on yourself. You cause damage somewhere that's gonna to have to be corrected. If you got insurance, let your insurance company handle it. It's not gonna be any money out of your pocket. It's just gonna be covered by your insurance company. No big deal. And on another note on that situation, if you have full coverage, which will fix damage to your car. At that point, you report your damage too. Nowadays, they got you taking pictures and uploading pictures on their website or in their app, or they'll send an adjuster by to check out your car to make arrangements to fix your car too. So that's the kind of situations I usually see. Now, if I'm in an accident, we hit each other, call the police, file a police report, and if you damage someone else's property, always, I mean always take pictures. I got into an accident one time. I was in the left turn lane coming down, and somebody came out of the right lane, turned into my lane. There was no way I could avoid him. I swerved to the left into oncoming traffic because no cars was coming to try to avoid the accident. They hit the side of the car, and they told the police I hit them. The police came. They blamed me for the accident. Then, when my insurance company contacted me after the police gave them my insurance information, they claim I hit them 
And when my insurance company showed me the damage that they reported on the car, five times worse. They had a small dent in a rub on their car when they hit me. Two days later, the front of their car was smashed in and five people went to the hospital. There was four people in the car. How did five people make it to the hospital? That shook me up. I, I, I was really afraid to drive for almost three weeks and I had to drive every day for my job. I was a real estate broker. So anyway, if you damage somebody else's property, always take pictures. You gotta have pictures to prove what things were when it all happened. When they closed California down and the people in Southern California was acting like the world had ended and was driving like maniacs, somebody brake checked me going into an intersection. I bumped their car. They got out of their car act like they were gonna shoot me. I talked them into pulling over. I got them calmed down. I took pictures of the front of my car which had barely dirt knocked off of it. I took pictures of the rear of their car, which had a smudge or two on it. I gave them one of my insurance cards and I told them, hey, think about it. If you want to make a claim, here's my insurance card information. Call, make a claim. It's been a full year. I never heard anything about it. So chances are they decided it wasn't enough to file a claim. Now, it's easy for somebody to have personal physical injuries if you run into the back of a car. People get whiplash all the time, hurt their neck, hurt their back, stuff like that. So always be prepared to cover yourself with your insurance so that they don't come to you with that crap. You don't want nobody knocking on your door trying to sue you about some car accident. You got insurance, that's what insurance is for. Your insurance company will take care of it. So, that's kind of how that thing goes. Now, if you think you're set up, things might be a little crazy, you don't feel as comfortable giving them your insurance card, which by the way has none of your personal information on it other than your license plate number probably and your car's VIN, go ahead, write the name of your insurance agent on a small piece of paper, like a business card size, write your name on that small piece of paper and give them your insurance agent's phone number and give them that. Insurance company, your agent's name, your agent's number, and your name. Tell them, hey, here's my insurance information. Go call if you like. At the most, give them your policy number. You may or may not want to do that. If the police is involved, the police will probably write that information down to give it to them. But I'm not real thrilled about giving them more information than they need. Because if they have my policy number, my insurance agent's name, my insurance agent's phone number, and my name, they should be able to file a claim. So that's kind of my lead tips on dealing with insurance companies. One, keep insurance. Understand whether or not you're in a no-fault state. Don't call the insurance company if you don't have to. So don't snitch on yourself if you have an accident. If you hit somebody and they want to file a claim, let them initiate that claim. There is no crime or nothing you did wrong by letting them initiate the claim. Because as soon as they call, they'll be calling you to verify it. So that's just a couple of tips I want to share with you. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.